Hello and welcome to Cancer Update 32. It's July 19, 2023. I had my third psychology session yesterday and uh, very unusual for me because you know what a chronic oversharer I am. I'm actually not going to um, talk to you about what, what we talked about in that session. Um, it's stuff you already know about me basically um, already, but it's stuff that um, is, is probably best left, left discreetly um, to to my own to to my own mind uh, I've come in this morning to Fiona Stanley Hospital uh, you would recall that my ascites is uh, very bad or very full at the moment um, so I'll just jump up and show you just the crazy amount of ascites I've got at the moment so that's that's what we're currently dealing with um, that is more ascites than I have ever had I would um, estimate that is at least eight litres. Um, when, I, when I had the seven litre drain, it was not as distended as that. So I would say it is at least eight litres. You had a call on that? And uh, the problem we've got is, of course, I'm having chemotherapy now. So because of the chemotherapy, I have a low neutrophil count, which is called neutropenia. And neutropenia has a risk of infection that comes with it. And sticking a uh, catheter in your belly, of course, does have a risk of infection, and uh, I need to be I need to be aware of that. So I've had blood. I've, I've taken off the little um, the band aid, but I've, I've had blood taken this morning. We're waiting for the results. Hopefully, my neutrophil count is high enough that I will be suitable for an ascites drain, um, hope, possibly as soon as this afternoon, but if not this afternoon, then, then tomorrow. And we'll go forwards from there. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for my um, blood results to come back, I am reading this book uh, called When Breath Becomes Air. It's by Paul Kalan Kalanithi. He uh, has sadly passed away now. And it's his story of, uh, him being a uh, surgical oncologist, uh, dealing especially with people that had um, issues with their spine, but also issues with various cancers. And him then, while he was still an intern, uh, before he'd become a resident, he uh, found out that he had a, an extremely, extremely serious cancer. And it's his journey of, uh, of when his breath turned into air. And I've only just begun that story, but it is already affecting me um, quite profoundly. And I am going to read that book more today while I, while I wait for my bloods to come back. And also while I hopefully wait and receive my ascites drain. So I'll update you as today goes on, but so, look, so far so good. Hi there, so I'm at home now. Uh, it's still Wednesday. My blood results came back and my bloods are good. So my neutrophil counts are up um, to a relatively normal level as it turns out. Uh, my coagulation uh, stats are quite good. Uh, effectively, I am at this point healthy enough for surgery. Unfortunately, the interventional radiology department is flat out busy today and they aren't able to fit me in. If I'm honest with you, I'm happy with that because it's getting quite late in the day. And I do know that these drains take quite a lot of time. So even if they had to fit me in at two in the afternoon, I do know that the drains take, you know, two, uh, sorry, like 12 hours sometimes. So that would have had me out the door at about 2 a.m., which would have been uh, relatively uh, difficult in a few ways. So what they have done is they've put me near the top of the list for tomorrow morning. So I'm going to sleep at my own house in my own bed tonight and I'll head back there tomorrow morning and uh, we will get this society's drained. As it turns out, uh, this scrap Mazda that I've got here, I've sold the engine out of it and um, the guy that's bought the engine wants to pick it up on Saturday morning and the only chance that I've got between now and Saturday morning to get that engine out is this afternoon. So. I'm going to now go and uh, do my best impression of a fat man pulling an engine out of a Mazda. So we'll see how that goes. If you're really nice to me, I might even give you some footage of that. So <laughs> we'll see, all right? Stay tuned. Just a tip for all of you out there that are wondering 
how you get going on removing an engine. Well, it's a lot like life. It's a lot like solving any other problem. You need to start at the start to motor. And then after you've removed the starter motor, you then need to remove the rubber boots behind the starter motor. And then once you've got the rubber boot out from behind the starter motor, you need a long flathead to line up the first of your torque converter bolts that you then need to remove. So as I said, just start at the start to motor. Thank you. Here endeth today's lesson.